Hallo und herzlich willkommen bei whisky.de, dem Treffpunkt Feiner Geister. Und heute geht es mal nicht um eine Brennerei, sondern es geht um eine Marke, einen Blend. Und zwar den berühmten Johnny Walker Blend. Dafür bin ich im Johnny Walker Archive. Und das Johnny Walker Archive ist schon echt eine beeindruckende, ja, ein beeindruckendes Gebäude. Denn es beinhaltet so viel Historie. Wir haben die Historie der Familie und wie es mit dem Handel der Familie Walker über die Jahre sich verändert hat. Dann haben wir 5000 Flaschen in einem Raum und wir haben nochmal ja, ganz viele, alle Ordner, die sie damals hatten, haben sie hier im Archive und ganz viel Werbung und anderes Zeug um Johnny Walker. Und wir fangen jetzt mal an und bauen auch mal ein bisschen auf, was hinter Johnny Walker dem Whisky steckt. Die Geschichte von Johnny Walker fängt natürlich mit der Familie Walker an. Die Familie Walker war eine bäuerliche Familie mit einem Bauernhof und der kleine John Walker, das einzige Bild von John Walker, wurde 1805 geboren und schon mit 14 ist sein Vater tragischerweise verstorben. Die Familie konnte den Bauernhof nicht weiterführen und deswegen haben sie den Bauernhof verkauft. Den Vertrag gibt es hier mit allem, was aufgelästet wurde, sogar Kühe, Schweine und einen Heuhaufen wurde auch mitverkauft. Und am Ende kamen sie auf 537 Pfund und noch ein paar Schillinge und noch ein paar Pennies. Und ähm, die Familie musste natürlich irgendwie weiterleben und die Familie hat dann in Kilmarnock, einer schottischen Stadt, einen kleinen ja, Gemischtwarenladen aufgebaut und der hieß dann John Walker. Und in diesem Gemischtwarenladen gab es natürlich alles Mögliche, aber auch schon relativ viele exotische Dinge wie Rum, natürlich Whisky, aber auch Wodka und viele Dinge, die auch schon aus Übersee eingekauft wurden. Sehr interessante Geschichte. Und er hat auch damals, hat John Walker schon auch verschiedene Blends, verschiedene Mischungen für seine Kunden gemacht. Die Kunden sagten, kamen im Grunde rein und sagten, ja, ich hätte gern ein bisschen was so in die Richtung. Und der hat sich dann überlegt und durch die Geschmäcker probiert, in welche Richtung es dann gehen könnte. Und hat damals schon ganz am Anfang schon im Grunde ein paar Blends amateurhaft hergestellt. Das ging dann immer so weiter und im Jahre 1879 hat dann Alexander Walker seinen Sohn übernommen. Die Firma wurde dann umbenannt in John Walker and Son. Und ähm, er hat das Ganze ein Stückchen reformiert. Denn er ist nicht mehr nur noch Gemischtwarenhändler gewesen, sondern er hat sich mehr auf dieses... Äh, Spirits Business auf die ja, Spirituosen konzentriert und hat auch angefangen, eine eigene Marke rauszubringen. Old Highland Whiskey by John Walker and Sons. Und die Marke ging relativ gut und er hat sie gut verkauft an, an viele Leute, war beliebt. Und auch er hat seine Söhne mit ins äh, Geschäft genommen und das war dann Alexander Walker der Zweite und George Walker. Ähm, die beiden ähm, haben das Geschäft nicht umbenannt, weil irgendwann natürlich John Walker nicht mehr dabei war, aber die, das Geschäft hieß immer noch John Walker and Sons. 1897 hat dann, äh, hat dann Alexander und George haben sie dann die Cardew Brennerei gekauft. Also sie hatten schon ein Office in London und Warehouses, wo sie ihre ihren Old Highland Whisky produziert haben, aber sie haben dann irgendwann angefangen und gesagt, wir brauchen jetzt auch mal eine Brennerei und sind damit noch viel tiefer in das Whisky-Geschäft eingestiegen. Wer ihnen die äh, Cardew Brennerei verkauft hat, war Elizabeth Cummings. Elizabeth Cummings war die zweite Frau in Cardew Brennerei, die dann die Brennerei für 20.500 Pfund an die Walker John Walker Sons Firma verkauft hat 
Und da konnten sie dann sich viel mehr unabhängig machen von anderen Brennereien. Sie hat ihre eigene Brennerei, viel mehr Warehouses und ja, viel professioneller gemacht. Und wie sie dann die Marke verändert haben, das schauen wir uns jetzt gleich mal hier drüben an. Was Alexander und George mit der Marke vorhatten, war wirklich sehr interessant. Sie haben sich aber im Grunde einfach der Zeit angepasst bzw. beeinflusst auch ein bisschen, wie sich das Marketing im ja, 19. Jahrhundert so verhielt. Das Erste, was sie gemerkt haben, ist, dass Leute nicht immer nur das Gleiche haben wollten. Also ihre Marke war schon sehr stark und sehr bekannt, der Old Highland Whisky bei John Walker and Sons. Und sie haben sich gedacht, okay, wir haben die Marke schon ein bisschen ausgereizt. Also haben sie gesagt, wir machen jetzt Subbranding, also Untermarken. Und hier sieht man einen alten Zeitungsausschnitt und in dem sieht man Old Highland Whisky, der White Label, Red Label und Black Label. Also sie haben drei verschiedene Abfüllungen gemacht in Weiß, Rot und Schwarz. Und die kennt man heutzutage von Johnny Walker im Grunde auch immer noch, weil die haben auch verschiedene Submarken mit verschiedenen farbigen Labels. Das war einmal dieses ja, Color Coding, die verschiedenen Labels. Was interessant war, war, dass äh, der Black Label war schon immer zwölf Jahre alt, auch auf dem, auf dem Etikett. Auf der Flasche war jedoch beim White und beim Red Label nicht geschrieben, wie alt dieser Whisky ist, aber in dieser Werbung haben sie es mit reingeschrieben. Hm? Ganz komisch. Ähm, was sie aber auch gemerkt hatten mittlerweile war, dass das Marketing in Richtung, mehr in Richtung Figuren, Persönlichkeiten und sonstiges geht. Also sie haben gemerkt, okay, wir brauchen etwas, womit die Leute sich mehr verbinden können. Der alte Schotte mit seinem Rock und äh, ja, Bart und ja, Highlander, der war in der Zeit nicht so aus. Das war die Zeit von London, wo London das Zentrum der Welt war. Also hatten sie auch ein Office in London, natürlich, um ihren Whisky zu verkaufen und sind dort zu einem berühmten Cartoonisten gegangen, äh, Tom Brown. Und der hat für sie einen Cartoon gezeichnet. Ja, im Grunde ihr... Markenbild. Und das war der Striding Man. Und das ist definitiv kein Schotte, sondern es war wirklich ein Engländer, eher sozusagen eher schon ein Londoner, der für diese Zeit damals extrem modern war mit Zylinder und Gehstock und äh, Handschuhen und Monokel. Und der hat sich bewegt. Also es war ein, ein, ein Gene, Mann. Und das war eben die Geburtsstunde von Johnny Walker. Und man kann auch schon mit äh, Bleistift da hinten sehen, Johnny Walker. Das war die äh, Zeit, ähm, wo auch der, der Slogan kom, äh, herkommt. 1820, still going strong. Das war der Slogan damals von Johnny Walker. Und was auch noch sehr interessant ist, wenn man sich dieses alte Bild anschaut, diese erste Zeichnung von Johnny Walker, ist, dass Johnny Walker nach links läuft. Das ist bei den heutigen Flaschen nicht so. Und jetzt schauen wir uns mal an, wie sich das auf den Flaschen äh, über die Jahre hinweg verändert hat und ja, warum der dann nach rechts gegangen ist. Ich befinde mich jetzt hier im Flaschenraum und der ist schon wirklich überwältigend. Es sind 5000 verschiedene Flaschen in diesem Raum und sie sind alle von Diageo. Und ja, damit haben wir auch alle Johnny Walker Flaschen hier. Und wir gehen jetzt mal ein bisschen auf die, die Entwicklung der Marke bzw. der Flaschen von Johnny Walker ein. Das Ganze hat natürlich angefangen beim Old Highland Whisky. Und da sieht man schon, ja, relativ einfache Flasche, rund, normales Label und ja, die eine Flasche mit der Schlange drin. Das Archiv ist sich sehr sicher, die Flasche hat Schottland nicht mit der Schlange drin verlassen, sondern das ist sicher irgendwo im ostasiatischen Markt, hat da irgendjemand mal gedacht, ach, ich mache da jetzt mal cool eine Schlange rein. Und ja, die, das Archiv hat glücklicherweise so eine Flasche auch noch gefunden und hat sich entschieden dafür, die Schlange drin zu lassen. Ähm, es ist ja dann, 1880 ist diese Marke Old Highland Whisky entstanden, die dann 
später umgemodelt wurde in Johnny Walker, der um, ungefähr 1808, äh, 1908 irgendwann entstanden ist, als dieser Cartoonist eben Johnny Walker erschaffen hat. Anfang sieht man hier noch Old Highland Whisky und dann geht es schon in den ja, in dieses Red Label rein und natürlich auch Old Highland Whisky im Black Label, was äh, die dritte Generation dann erschaffen hat. Irgendwann wurde das Ganze dann zu Johnny Walker, immer noch mit Korkverschluss, immer noch sehr ähnlich zum alten Red Label. Also die Submarken haben diese neue Marke ein wenig getragen dann und hier sieht man auch, dass er eben noch nach links läuft. Irgendwann dann in den 50ern haben wir hier den Schraubverschluss, der eingefügt wurde und es gibt immer wieder kleine Veränderungen an den Labels. Und die große Änderung, die es bei Johnny Walker gegeben hat, war 1999. Da haben sich die Leute hingesetzt und gesagt, okay, wir werden jetzt mal grundlegend die Marke verändern. Und wenn man eine Marke verändert, macht man immer nur sehr kleine Markenveränderungen. Und wir haben hier Johnny Walker der ab da nur noch nach rechts läuft. Es gab vorher schon einige Johnny Walker in verschiedenen Werbungen, die irgendwo mal nach rechts gelaufen sind, aber tendenziell ist er vorher immer nach links gelaufen. Und da gibt es ein bisschen was aus der Filmindustrie. Wenn man nach links geht, geht man nach Hause. Und wenn man nach rechts geht, geht man nach vorne oder in einem Film meistens ins Abenteuer. Also man wird am Anfang des Filmes die Helden immer nach rechts gehen sehen und am Ende, wenn sie nach Hause kommen, gehen sie nach links. Beim nächsten Film, den ihr anschaut, schaut euch das mal an. Wenn sie nach Hause kommen, dann gehen die Leute meistens nach links. Und das ist das, was Johnny Walker damit symbolisieren will. Johnny Walker geht nach rechts, nach vorne, ins, ins Unbekannte. Und der neue Spruch, nicht mehr das alte Still Going Strong 1820, sondern es heißt Keep Walking Johnny Walker. Also er geht immer nach vorne. Und das ist auch so ein bisschen das Motto und das Mantra von Johnny Walker, Sie probieren gerne sehr viel aus. Jetzt gucken wir so ein bisschen, so ein bisschen die History vom Black Label an. Fängt natürlich auch bei dem Old Highland Whisky an. Extra Special hieß das damals noch. Und geht auch weiter. Es hat auch einen Schraubverschluss bekommen. Aber man sieht, nicht jeder Black Label hatte zwölf Jahre drauf. Die neuen Black Label haben alle wieder zwölf Jahre drauf. Aber irgendwo in den 50ern hat man kein Black Label mit zwölf Jahren gehabt. Ja, woher kommt es? Natürlich vom Krieg. Und jetzt schauen wir uns mal ein bisschen die, die Special Sachen noch an, was es hier noch für interessante Dinge gibt, warum Johnny Walker mittlerweile so innovativ ist, aber auch schon damals innovativ war. Ihr habt ja schon über die Familiengeschichte gesehen, dass <lacht> über Johnny Walker ganz viele Innovationen reingekommen sind. Eine Innovation zum Beispiel ist der Johnny Walker Swing. Und die Swingflasche ist nämlich besonders die Swingflasche, die ja, swingt ein wenig, die, die kann ein wenig wackeln. Und das war eben damals so, oh, lasst eine Flasche machen, wenn wir die auf einer Schifffahrt auf dem Tisch stehen haben, dass die sich dann einfach mit dem Schiff so ein bisschen mitbewegt. Ja, also relativ innovativ und haben es durch die Jahre auch noch durchgezogen. Und was ich hier mal so zeigen kann, ist diese Innovationen. Also es gibt unglaublich viele Johnny Walker Special Edition. Wir haben hier unglaublich viele Blue Label mit verschiedenen Städten, die aus verschiedenen, in einzelnen Ventriden sind verschiedene Kontinente. Wir haben doch hier drüben, glaube ich, ist das Amerika. Dann hatte ich hier noch was mit Südamerika und auch noch, ich glaube, das war Südeuropa an der Stelle noch. Also es gibt extrem viele verschiedene Special Edition. Und das ist das Interessante, denn Alexander und George hatten damals schon 120 Märkte erschlossen und jetzt gucken wir uns mal an, wie sie denn diese Märkte überhaupt erschlossen haben, wie Johnny Walker dort verkauft wurde. Ich bin jetzt im ja, eigentlichen Archiv wo alle Ordner und verschiedenen Dinge archiviert wurden, die man nicht direkt als Flasche oder äh, zur Familienhistorie, zur direkten Familienhistorie zeigen kann. Das heißt, hier sind extrem viele Ordner, denn ja, die Walkers haben sehr gut 
alles Schrift gehalten und sehr viele Journals geschrieben. Und hinter mir sieht man dann schon einige Bilder und Werbeplakate, mit denen Johnny Walker beworben hat. Und die Walker, die Johnny Walker Marke ist so weltweit vertrieben worden, dass die ganzen Pamphlets, Flyer und Vertriebsdokumente nicht nur nach Zeitalter, nicht nur nach Jahren archiviert wurden, sondern auch nach ähm, Orten. Also wenn man hier anschaut, Südafrika und Asien und Hongkong und auch, es gibt auch einen großen Ort, der heißt verschiedene äh, Länder. Also die ganzen vielen kleinen Länder hatten natürlich äh, einen Sack bekommen. Und ähm, da sieht man dann, wie weit das überhaupt verschickt wurde. Und diese Länder hatten natürlich alle ihre eigene Werbung. Ich hab, wir haben hier mal so ein schönes Bild von den japanischen Werbungen oder, oder asiatischen Werbungen. Und dort sieht man schon eine ganz anders beworben wurde nach verschiedenen Märkten. Sie haben sich sehr stark regionalisiert angepasst, an was die Leute damals wollten. Und die durften dann auch den Johnny Walker etwas verändern. Und wenn man sieht, unten in der Mitte, also der zweite von links, der Johnny Walker geht auch schon damals nach rechts. Da hat sich einfach einer schon damals gedacht, doch, den drehe ich jetzt einfach mal um. Ja, also ein wunderschönes Archiv von allen verschiedenen Werbungen und Promotion-Artikeln. Es gibt auch eine ganze Menge Kisten, mit denen Johnny Walker in die Welt verschickt wurde. Aber jetzt fokussieren wir uns mal wieder zurück, was Johnny Walker heutzutage ist. Und da habe ich jemanden ganz tollen gefunden. Das war bei Craig and Moore. Und das ist Jim Beveridge, der heutige Master Blender von Johnny Walker. Und mit dem werden wir mal durch die Core Range durchgehen und mal schauen, was diese Flaschen dann wirklich heutzutage bedeuten. Ja, jetzt gibt es noch ein kleines Tasting. Und ein kleines Interview. So, it's, uh, let's have a little tasting and a bit of an interview. I'm sitting here with uh, Jim Beveridge, and you've been in the whiskey business for 40 years, 40 years with Johnny Walker, and you're now the master blender of Diageo and the master blender of Johnny Walker. Very respectable position, so you definitely do know everything about whiskey, huh? <laughs> Thank you very much for having us. It's my pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what are we having today? Well, I thought we might uh, look at some core Johnny Walker blends. Mm -hmm. I think we'll look at Johnny Walker Red Label, mm -hmm. Johnny Walker Black Label, and let's finish with Johnny Walker Blue Label. Okay, so blends are always a bit uh, more, how would I say, mysterious, because you don't know exactly what's in it. If you have, well, let's say, something like Craig and Moore, it's a single malt, you know, everything's from Craig and Moore. Uh, there's a recipe for, for Johnny Walker, right? How well kept is the secret? Does, does everybody in the production line know what to put in it? Or, or is it like a well kept secret? It's somewhere in the safe? How many people do you know? Well, there's very, there's very few people uh, will know the recipe. And it is, it is kept in a safe. So it, it, it's, it's restricted to just a few people who understand how to combine all the different malt and grain whiskies that are in. Mm -hmm. And Johnny Walker. So, but we, I mean, you, you can always a bit think about what, what's in there, like from the distilleries that uh, Diageo owns, but you do switch casks, so <laughs> there's always a bit of a mystery going on, huh? Well, it, it's, it's, it's quite clear. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the Johnny Walker blend goes back many, many years, almost, you know, it's almost 200 years old now, Johnny mm. Walker. And so we have a very rich heritage and we have, uh, in our archives, we have uh, records of the blends um, across that time. And the reality is that uh, Johnny Walker Red Label, Johnny Walker Black Label, th those recipes are, are very similar to what they were all those years ago. They ha really haven't changed very much. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're still using um, some amazing malt whiskies from Scotland. Um, lots of whiskies are used in those blends and they create the, the flavors that, we, that our consumers have come to know and respect. Okay, I'm, I'm really excited. So we start off with the, the red label. Sure. Let's have a bit of so that. So let's, let's have some red label, Johnny Walker red label. Um, and if you're a, fa a fan of malt whiskies, um, there are some amazing fresh malty flavors in Johnny Walker red label. Mm -hmm. So let's just take a sip of this. Um, very fresh, vibrant flavors. 
Um, and when I, when, I, when I drink Johnny Walker Red Label, it reminds me of all the different malt whiskies that, I, that I've come to know over the years. So we'll just have to take a wee nose. It's very fresh and vibrant and uh, it's almost like green apples. Um, mm -hmm. Very, very distinctive, bold flavours. And with a sort of... Um, um, and with a hint of smokiness there as mm -hmm. well. That's, there's always a hint of smokiness with, yeah. with the uh, Johnny Walker. Well, that's, that's the classic Johnny Walker style. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very traditional style of Scotch whisky, um, and it's very similar to how it might have been many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the style that you know, our consumers have come to love and enjoy. I love it. It's, mm, it's a, it, the Johnny Walker is an, is an enjoyable whisky, I think. Yeah, I think so. It's a... It's a it's a drinkable whiskey. Absolutely. And I think that's what blends are all about. Blends mm -hmm. are all about um, combining the flavours from lots of different malt whiskies, combining them together to create a, a, more, you know, a complex um, combination of flavours. Mm -hmm. And then we use some lighter style whiskies to then reveal the flavours and make the taste um, sweet and accessible. That's, the, that's mm -hmm. the principles behind our blends. Oh, I like it. I really like it. It's it's amazing when you when you have the distance from the nose how it changes. Yeah. I like it. Shall we take a sip while it's oh, yeah. and then we'll add some water? Uh, oh, yeah, let's let's take a sip and let's then add some sip. water. Mm. See that reminds me of all the malt whiskies that I know and love. <laughs> um, that beautiful kind of fruitiness. Um, sort of fresh fruit, vibrant fruitiness, mm -hmm. and then, and then the kind of um, there's definite smoky flavour in there as well, sort of lingering smokiness. Mm -hmm. that well, combined. it just starts after a, a few seconds. Yeah, and that's a very light, light smokiness. It's quite light. Mm -hmm. it's, it's there. You can still. It's a long finish. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a nice, delightful sweetness to the blend as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sweetness is. Yeah, yeah fragrant and and very much present. Yeah. Combined with that fruitiness, I think that's what the people like about Johnny Walker. Yeah, and you always think about when you have a a, a Scotch whiskey, it's like old and oaky and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then you have that in your glass, and you're like, oh, that's really yeah. refreshing, nice. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's add some water. Let's, let's add some up. water because the water's good. Um, the water is good because it um, when the whiskies are made the the, the flavours are trapped in the spirit, but when we add the water to it, it, it releases the flavours, um, and that's why that's why we add water. So just add a little, some water to this, and it begins to release the flavours in the whiskey. Mm. Yeah, those the fresh flavours just become more obvious, mm -hmm. and to me, this is much it's like summer fruit. Apples I, and yeah, pears. Apples. Yeah. <laughs> I do get that. Definitely get the red apple. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of crisp and fresh mm -hmm. and uh, refreshing flavour. Mm. In a sip. Mmm. 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 Uh, lots of flavour. That crisp mm -hmm. freshness. Then um, sweetness as well. And then that sort of smokiness is there, that kind of lingering smokiness that um, mm -hmm. is there. Oh, it actually make it, made it even a bit more smoky. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. It brings it out. Yeah, yeah, I think it releases the smoke somehow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. It's, it's, it's nice. Johnny mm -hmm. Walker Red Label is uh, it's very refreshing. Mm -hmm. I think it's nice to drink it neat with a little water like this. Mm -hmm. um, it's also good if you, if you drink it long with a um, tall glass. Mm -hmm. Lots of ice, maybe mm -hmm. some more water or some soda or other other mixers. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes a very refreshing uh, mm -hmm. Scotch whisky. Mm -hmm. So, um, as a master blender, you you make the blends. So, because of the old blends, I mean, you have the recipe and they're all done continuously to keep the quality alike. But um, when you do new, like special releases, I've seen. I've seen some anniversary editions. Now we have the GOT, and how do you come up with new recipes? How how does that process work? Do do you just find something or mix something, or do the marketing team come to you, or how does it work? Well, it, 
Johnny Walker has a, a, a long tradition of innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it mostly comes from the market. So mm -hmm. um, our consumers will tell us um, the kind of flavours they like, the kind of whiskies they would like to enjoy. So that, that's our signal. And then using that, we then think about how we might innovate and create new, new, new expressions of John Walker. That's usually how it happens. Mm. So it comes from the market. And okay, then, that's, and then that's we good. then apply that, apply our knowledge to achieve that objective. Well, that's a good point because uh, if you if you come from the market, then you always produce what the customer likes. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very very nice. But in a way, as whiskey makers, as you know, um, Scotch whiskey must be at least three years old mm -hmm. before we can call it Scotch whiskey. So in a way, as whiskey makers, we have to be thinking ahead, almost <laughs> predicting what the, our consumers might like in the future. Uh, yeah, that, that's uh, and that's. So we have uh, to think of that. That's an interesting thing because. Uh, you as a master blender, you, you have to have the ingredients, so yeah. you have to talk to the master distillers or the distillery managers to, yeah. oh, it looks like we, we need to go a bit more in that direction. Yeah. Okay, very interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very special job, I think. I think so. We have, to, we have to stand in the future as well as the past, because in the past we're using whiskies from the past and in the present, mm -hmm. as we are just now. But also thinking about the future as well, because we need to make our whiskies with a view and what we think we need in, in, in mm -hmm. times to it come. It really needs careful thinking because it's, yeah. a, it's such a long time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and well, we're going to taste Johnny Walker yeah. Black Label Let, now. Let's have some black. Uh, and Johnny Walker Black Label is 12 years old. So it's hard to imagine. Uh, <laughs> What's the world going to be like in 12 well, years? Yeah, t I mean, today we're in Crag and Moor mm -hmm. and the whiskey's being made at Crag and Moor. In 12 years' time, uh, we'll be in Johnny Walker Black Label. So it's hard to imagine <laughs> just exactly what that might be like. Uh, it's oh, 12 years it's quite a thought, isn't it? What did you do 12 years before? Like, okay. Exactly. What, yeah, exactly. 2005. So I think it was still in school. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so I've, I've been with Johnny Walker for 40 years, and uh, I'm now in my fourth generation of Johnny Walker Black Label. Mm -hmm. So in the first 12 years, I was, I was learning about how to make whiskey, and mm -hmm. then the second 12 years, I was then applying that as a blender. And mm -hmm. then the third 12 years, I was thinking more about the future, um, mm -hmm. you know, where, where we should be. And now I'm into the fourth generation of uh, Johnny Walker Black mm -hmm. Label. It's quite a thought. <laughs> yeah, it's quite, quite, a, quite a thought. Quite a thought. So let's try this. Johnny Walker Black Label. Again, this is a very old traditional recipe, which when you go to the archive, you'll see records of, the, of, the, of this blend. So let's have a, a nose of this. Now, the, fl the big flavors here, there's definitely, definitely the fresh fruit. Um, there's also some, and it's, it's more like, it's less about springtime, more about summer. Um, mm -hmm. fruitiness, kind of rich fruitiness um, and then some flavours, we call them like almost like dried fruit, like raisins mm -hmm. and sultanas, there's flavours there. Yeah, it's a bit, bit more oxidised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, s the smoke is definitely still there and then there's sort of um, mm. quite distinctive sweet vanilla flavours. It's, <coughs> I would call it a bit more intense also a bit more oxidized, yeah. like, it's, yeah. It's deeper and richer. Raisins and yep. that kind of stuff. That's right, yeah. It's mm -hmm. not this, um, Johnny Walker Red, li Red Label is fresh and vibrant. Mm -hmm. Johnny Walker Black Label is maybe, maybe more, um, more s it's more um, contemplative. Mm -hmm. And the flavors are there and more complex and richer and uh, deeper in flavor. So mm -hmm. let's take a, a wee taste. Mm. Wow, well, mm. it's all the hallmarks of Johnny Walker. Mm. Um, that fruitiness, rich fruit, fresh fruits, um, gentle smokiness, mm. Mm. And sweet vanilla. Mm. Okay. Oh, okay now, here comes a bit of the smoke. Mm. I would describe this one as complex. 
It is complex. There is a. The other one had a bit one direction, a bit more into the fresh direction. Yeah. This one just spreads out. Absolutely. <laughs> so hard to describe what's the what's in the lead. Hard to describe. I, I would say yeah, bit, you, again, bit the fruitiness, but the other. You don't need ours. to worry about that because <laughs> it just works. That's the, that's the that's the main thing. Yeah. In, <laughs> <laughs> usually, when you when you when you go into a whiskey, then you you give it a lot of time and a lot yeah. of thought and. Some of the whiskies are meant to be enjoy just enjoyed. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you can take some time and, and just take a deep dive and, and really go into it, but you can also just have a sip. Just enjoy <laughs> it. Just enjoy the flavours, the, the, the very warming flavours, and then that complexity of flavour um, opens out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the whiskies in Johnny Walker black label, they come, we, co we talk about the four corners of Scotland, we talk about mm -hmm. um, whiskies like Klein Leash in the Highlands, mm -hmm. um, Cardew, we, you're going to visit Cardew in, the, in Speyside, mm -hmm. there's uh, Glen Kinshi in the Lowlands, mm -hmm. and then uh, Kalila. Yeah, I've been in Kalila, yeah. uh, it's a beautiful place, just the, yeah. the still house. <laughs> well, that's, that, 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 Kalila is a very, very important model story for Johnny Walker. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, when they make when they make uh, Kalila for Johnny Walker, they take enormous care to create that flavour mm -hmm. that we now find in Johnny Walker Black Label. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. So um, Johnny Walker is a, a well-known brand. Like I think pretty much everyone who's watching this video will know Johnny Walker. Yeah, yeah. But um, I've done a bit of a like history research. There were a lot of blends back in the 80s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and they've been discontinued in the 80s and the 90s, but uh, Johnny Walker kept on walking. <laughs> so, yeah. so why did Johnny Walker survive and, and the blend industry took a bit of a dive? What's so special about Johnny Walker? I, I think it's, um, well, we're very lucky. We, we have an amazing blend, an amazing recipe, which we've inherited from mm -hmm. through those years. We have rich sources, rich stocks of whiskies, almost 10 million um, casks of whiskey. Mm -hmm. Rich uh, um, combination of malts with a lot of different malt whiskies, different flavour, different flavour styles. And the lighter grain whiskies, which are great at revealing the flavours and adding sweetness. It's just a wonderful combination of a classic uh, blend of Scotch whiskies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's that asset that has uh, seen Johnny Walker through. I mean, remember also there's a, um, the, the, the enormous craftsmanship that sits behind Johnny Walker through you visiting the, the different distilleries, um, their casks, our craftsmen making the casks, our coppersmiths making the stills, and then, then the blending team who you know spend a lot of time working to make sure this blend remains as, as, as it always has been and keeps that quality there. So that's all part of the Johnny Walker heritage and I think that's what sits behind the success of Johnny Walker. So it, so what you're saying is it's, it's the it's the sheer amount of work that is being put into the bottle to have such a quality. Yes. Okay, yes. yeah, I think good, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we add some water to it? Oh yes. Yeah. This will open it up a wee bit, begin to some of the flavours will come out, um, begin to be revealed a bit more. Yeah, they just, it's just a bit more, of, it just releases the flavours. Mm. I think, mm. I, I find that <coughs> with, with water, the apple and um, fresh fruit flavours, they tend to come, come out first of all. But the... Um, the dried fruit, like raisins, sultanas, and figs, they now are, are there as well. And there's some hidden spiciness and zesty, zesty or, orange flavours as well. Mm -hmm. They're all revealed. I, you know, it's water. amazing. I'm, I'm always amazed, uh, even though I'm already also quite a couple of years in the whiskey business, I'm always amazed how, how you get uh, some more, something that is made of grain, malt is grain. So how that can be so fruity. Yes. It's, it's always amazing how, yes. how you can have apples in there. It's just... Well, that's yeah. the, it's the yeast that does that. Yeah. When you take the, the, uh, the, from the malt, you then ferment. And during that fermentation, amazing 
um, esters are produced by the yeast. And then when you mature the whiskey, particularly long maturation for let's like, say 12 years with Johnny Walker, mm -hmm. those fruity flavours are building up and being created as well. So there's uh, some very amazing chemistry goes on there <laughs> during those 12 years in our warehouses. Mm. Mm. Very, very nice. Mm. And I mean, Johnny Walker Black Label wins lots of awards. Mm -hmm. um, I think Jim Murray's just recently voted it one of one of his best blends for <laughs> 2020. So we're, yeah, it's, we're it's really an pleased. amazing blend, and um, I think it's it's meant to be enjoyed, and Absolutely. I think many many people do. Yeah. So are the the recipes uh, a lot different between the different expressions? Uh, yeah, well, the principles are the principles remain, um, but they they obviously different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for each of the blends, so the the principles are the key big big flavors in all Johnny Walker blends will be mm -hmm. a combination of fresh fruit, rich fruit, uh, sweet vanilla, and um, smokiness. That's the sort of key flavors, and they're all in different combinations, different different um, mm -hmm. percentages. I think the 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 richness and the the fruitiness and that kind of stuff that. Um, I can't quite pinpoint it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say uh, that I could take it out in a blind tasting, yeah. but I think the, that that little touch of smoke, that just every time you have a, a Johnny Walker, like, oh yeah, that's that little touch of smoke. Yeah. I, I don't know why, but it's for me that's like, oh, that's a Johnny Walker thing. <laughs> yeah, and, well, I think um, that is Johnny Walker, and I think it takes a lot of skill to get that that flavour just right. Uh, I think Johnny Walker achieves that. Um, you know, we've learned that from over the years, just mm -hmm. exactly how to do that. And it's for me, it's it's strange because it's 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 not uh, it's not something I would say. Okay, mm, let's classify that in PPM, but it's that that light touch that just mm. touches it. Mm. Yeah, and that's why distilleries like Kalila are so important to Johnny Walker, mm -hmm. and distilleries like Cardew and Klein Leash, Klein Kinchy, All these different malts are hugely important to mm -hmm. creating the flavours that you'll find in, in Johnny Walker. Mm -hmm. So, blue label. Blue. Yeah. That that's is that um, the blue label is it's not quite top of the line, but it's like the really premium edition, right? Uh, yes, Johnny Walker blue label is really special for Johnny Walker. Um, you know, when it, when when the blend was first created, the, the you know our aim was to to use the best whiskies we had to mm -hmm. create the best flavour. That's really what uh, Johnny Walker blue label. Is all about. Mm -hmm. um, it uses some, you know, we use rare whiskies for Johnny Walker Blue Label. Um, rare in terms of the, their age, in terms of their flavours. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 really a, a, an expression of all the, the amazing whiskies that we have um, mm -hmm. for Johnny Walker. Yeah, I find it always amazing that um, that. Uh, it's not. It's not a cheap whiskey. You have a good price tag on no, it. No, it's not. But I, I, it, uh, many, many people buy it. It's just yeah. people know that you get you get the good stuff. <laughs> what, what, what I recommend we do, though, um, my favourite way to drink Johnny Walker Blue Label is to sip some water first of all. Okay. Let's sip some water, uh, and just to clear our palates. So let's do that first of all, and then um, have a nose. Mm. That clears the palate, it's quite good. Mm -hmm. um, kind of refreshes your, your senses. I got good water here at Kringmore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice, isn't it? Mm. Water's important. Mm -hmm. um, so then we can nose the whiskey. And you begin to get a sense of the bold flavours that are in Johnny Walker Blue Label. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they're much more, I mean, there's huge complexity in there great depth of flavour um, and uh, it's very, um, you, you just want to go in there and discover the different flavours that are there. And the flavours are quite refined versions of what, you know, things like, if, if there's fruit in there it's autumnal fruit, you know, rich autumnal fruit, mm -hmm. um, it's ripe apples, you know, ripe rich apples flavours in there. Uh, and if it's if it's bananas, the banana flavours that are quite ripe bananas, all those deep autumnal 
They're almost like fruit compotes, mm -hmm. sweet compotes, very rich and sweet and fruity. Um, the richer, f I mean, in the richer fruits are more intense, like um, like they're quite concentrated mm -hmm. flavors. And then the the kind of um, the, f the the rich fruits, um, the the you know the raisin sultanas, are they're deep, rich versions of those things. I like it. And then the smokiness is there for sure. Mhm. Mm but I think I have to say, smokiness is a bit. I'm not quite sure if I got the right distance, but it is there. But it's, it's just a whiff. What what we need to do now is, is take yeah, another maybe sip that's of water. Because of the, the water, yeah. Take a sip of water and then and then immediately have a sip of Johnny Walker Blue Label. So have a sip of water, kind of rinse your mouth out. Yeah, let's drink Johnny Walker Blue Label. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the flavours just explode <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, a giant wave, a, a big wave from the sea, you know, bursting <laughs> on the shore. This mm -hmm. explosion of flavour. Oh. Um, it just, uh, it's mm -hmm. just amazing. Oh. Mm, I like it, and it's such a, it's such a delicate taste. Absolutely, it's it's mm -hmm. easy on the palate, and yet it's also very intense. Mm -hmm. Um. And you get all the different flavours I've talked about, like a big Atlantic breaker, you know, all these bold flavours. Mm. Yeah, you do have a lot of, a lot of the, the fruitiness, mm. but what I also do get, a bit of a maltiness in there. Absolutely. For some, some reason. Yeah, the <laughs> maltiness is there, because the, well, obviously some really special malt whiskies are used in Johnny Walker Blue Label, um, and they mm. just explode in, in, in flavours. Um, and then there's the, this burst of flavour, Including the smoke, and then as the, you can imagine as, as the wave recedes back into the sea, <laughs> you're left this kind of lingering um, mm. finish, which mm. is just classic Johnny Walker. Mm. Yeah, it's one of these whiskies that mm, that activate your mouth and just makes you want to <laughs> have another sip. Absolutely, <laughs> that's the that's the, that's the beauty of a good whiskey when the mm. the whiskey makes you think like. Oh, I want to take another sip. <laughs> that, then, so. that's, then you know you have a good whiskey in your glass. Johnny Walker Blue Label is very special. Uh, mm -hmm. mm. We are very pleased with Johnny Walker Blue Label. It's, yeah, it's I really great, love it. Great. It's a lot of, we spend a lot of time you know, choosing the whiskies, making sure they're just right. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that our consumers worldwide will really enjoy the flavours that they'll find in there. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I have... I think my father did most of the tasting for Johnny Walker, but I, I did have a few of them. I think I had um, the Blue Label, mm. and I had one, I think it was a, a rye, yeah. was it red rye? Yes, red yes, rye. Yes, red rye. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there was a Jane Walker. Um, so there are quite many special releases, and uh, it is changing. You said there is a bit of an innovation going on. Mm. Where do you think the the Johnny Walker brand is moving? What do we see in like twelve years? <laughs> I, th I think the Johnny Walker Red Label, Johnny Walker Black Label, Johnny Walker Blue Label they they will they will be the heart of Johnny Walker. I'm mm -hmm. absolutely certain of that. Um, enjoyed in all sorts of different occasions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with Johnny Walker Red Label and Johnny Walker Black Label, you see different serve occasions, and you see lots of work with. Bartenders creating amazing cocktails mm -hmm. with, with those whiskies. Um, so that that I think will be the core to Johnny Walker. Nevertheless, there will be innovation for sure because it's really important that we keep moving and thinking of new ways of expressing Johnny Walker. Um, Johnny Walker Red Rise, an example. Um, uh, Johnny Walker White Walker. Mm -hmm. These are all examples of um, of innovation, and I think um, those those styles of flavors. Um, are very important for certain consumers, and we'll mm -hmm. always want to be able to to uh, be able to achieve that. So, for mm -hmm. sure, there will be innovation. Mm -hmm. But you, you, it comes to you as the customers demand. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Our customers tell us the flavors that they like, and mm -hmm. that that is the history of Johnny Walker. It's always one of um, being in tune with our consumers and making sure that the whiskies that we make are whiskies that are, we know our consumers will enjoy. Yeah, it's always important to listen to the customer. I think so, yeah. <laughs> definitely, Absolutely. definitely. 
Mm, I love it. So it's it's a beautiful dram. It's, it's a lovely way to talk about whiskey. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So yeah, thank you very much for the my pleasure. interview. Thank you very much for the whiskeys, uh, showing me how enjoyed <laughs> how Johnny Walk is meant to be enjoyed. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then please give a thumbs up. Or if you know anybody who might be interested in this video, then please feel free to share this video with your friends. And see you next time.